I think just get a sense of the scope of how big the, the final garden is, is going to be. You all know that the Rose Garden is actually a project of, of lions yeah. back in 1930. Um, it, there's an inscription on one of the uh, walls back here that credits Lyons for, for starting the Rose Garden, which is ha how we ended up here with the Sensory Garden project. Are you sure you should have a wood chart here? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a great time of year to be in the Rose Garden because, obviously. <laughs> This rose garden follows uh, some really strict uh, conventions, rules about uh, how to design certain kinds of English gardens, which I'm not familiar with, but uh, I certainly appreciate the roses. Yeah, so the rose garden has, they have a, a, probably just a couple of full-time staff, and then they have uh, dozens of volunteers who come in and, and uh, help. So here is the, the great bas relief that was um, uh, restored uh, a few years ago that triggered this whole business of uh, thinking about a century by <laughs> convention that we really wanted to get something in the ground that people who might happen to come and and check out the future home of the sensory garden yeah. could, could just get a sense of what a sensory garden yeah. is all about. Um, it goes down as far as there's a big pot with a sort of fountain at the end and that's as far as we've gone with our with our work. But, <laughs> that just lets you know where the edge of the path is, is really important. And the, the bricks are actually wheelchair uh, accessible. I mean, it's the width that's... Um, so you kept it natural like looking, but still uh, accessible. Yeah, that's awesome. The original Finney oh, estate, right which is Frank Frank these Frank grounds Frank were Frank part Frank of Frank the... Frank 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 Finney owned all of this, and he gave the city the zoo and the and, and all of this property on the condition that it would not be developed in a high-rise housing built here. That it was a great thing because this brings it a lot easier for. Um, and the, the poor chair is kind of sad, but um, 
in its in its glory day last year. It was just gorgeous because all of the mosses were just uh, so rich and green. And, uh, and we've noticed over the over the months though that people have actually come and sit down in the chair. Really? The, on the seat, the, the mosses are really smashed in. And then one day Briar came in and she had, she's our uh, landscape uh, designer who has been part of our steering committee for the beginning. And she, she has all these old boots that she doesn't oh. use anymore. So she spray painted them and brought them in and planted them. So in the final in the final design that's gonna extend all the way down there and come up here and then wrap all the way around up that hill. There will be it'll be a fully accessible garden. So people who are blind are gonna be able to come to the garden and will be able to either I mean, whatever sort of whatever they use to to you know maneuver in the world, uh, they'll be able to use their their or their stick or their dog or um, and and literally feel their way around and we'll have uh, signage either in braille or um, audio that they'll be able to uh, tap into so they can uh, right right and sort of what to what to reach out to touch or what to smell or um, awesome. So it, it's, just, it's really um, helpful for me to sort of hear what uh, what what yeah. people think and, and see, and uh, because we're just getting started now, the advisory um, committee has been formed, and we'll be starting our first meeting uh, in just a couple of weeks, um, and there will be a couple of like broad public meetings. To show people sort of what's what the what the final design and, and uh, garden is going to look like, so I'll be sure to get that word out. Do you have any spokesman that would be willing to come out and speak to clubs? Yes, I'd like, to get a, I'd like to get information on that, and if we can start getting them out to the individual okay. clubs too, prior to because obviously you're going to need help, there's going to be manpower and stuff, so we all know ahead of time. Yeah, I think I think I that ideally um, after after this advisory group has sort of met, sort of met, has met and uh, begins to get a sense of what uh, what the next steps are going to be, uh, that would be a great time for someone to come and speak to clubs and say. Here's the progress we've made so far, and here's where we're heading, and here's how you can be part of the.